Welcome back to another Wednesday night program. Today we are starting a series on parenting and we have invited Laura Richmond to join us to talk about this topic. Laura and her husband, Sean, have been doing seminars and counseling parents on this very topic. They are the founders of Antioch, New England. Parenting is hard. And so how do we as Christian parents foster children who are resilient and who have a strong faith and moral values when the world in which we live is at odds with our Christian worldview? Let's find out. So Laura, welcome to the program. I'm so glad that you have um, agreed to join us today to yeah. talk about parenting. So um, just tell me a little bit, you have five kids yes. and um, I've known mm -hmm. one of those kids yes. uh, since our work, I work at uh, Boston Trinity Academy and had the pleasure of meeting Sam and uh, who is a lovely young man. <laughs> so awesome. you're doing something right. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, know you, I know you and your husband, Sean, are doing something right. But, you know, yeah. talking about parenting, um, I know that you and Sean have been talking on this topic and doing seminars on this topic for many, many years. And so I just kind of want to get your perspective. Um, and, you know, parenting nowadays, it feels like, and I parented, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a child myself, it feels like it's a lot harder now than it was, mm -hmm. just in terms of uh, the kinds of things that our kids are exposed to that mm -hmm. they weren't, that wasn't available. It just wasn't available when, when my, my child was little and right. maybe when your oldest was little. Yeah. And so um, even, you know, as we are entering this conversation, um, I wanted to start off just talking perhaps to uh, couples who are thinking about having yes. children or, or perhaps, you know, a couple who is, whose child is on the way. Uh, and so what are the kinds of things that, um, that you would recommend, that you would suggest that the couple talk about before the child comes on the scene? That's great. <laughs> so to speak. And I want to I wanna start off by saying um, I'm honored to be here. And also just that um, my husband and I are not perfect parents <laughs> and we don't have perfect children. <laughs> so um, just, uh, but I'm speaking hopefully from a place of humility of what we've learned along the way. Um, and we have heard, had to learn some things the hard way. Um, but I love your question about, you know, starting from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think that um, the biggest thing thing that I would say is working on your marriage. Mm. Um, your marriage is the foundation for what your kids are going to get. Mm. And um, I definitely think that, you know, Sean and I tried to work on our marriage before. And then once you start having kids, it brings out everything, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so there's no way to have a perfect marriage ever. But there's no way to have it perfect before you start. Yeah. But... Um, I would say um, working on working on yourself, you know, allowing, um, being open to God teaching you yeah. personally, you know, your self-awareness and then how you relate, um, I, I'd say is, are the biggest things. And then I would also say is um, begin to explore um, like parenting styles even, mm -hmm. or, um, or look for mentors. Mm -hmm. um, that was one thing I was thinking about in preparation for this is just the importance of mentors and that has been in our own life. Mm -hmm. um, I can look back and, and point to people um, that were very intentional with Sean and I that we modeled our families mm -hmm. after. Yeah. Um, and... I don't even know what we would have done without them. <laughs> you know, we both had good parents, but we also needed those mentors. Yeah. So, yeah. so working on your marriage, finding mentors, yeah. um, beginning to explore, you know, what kind of um, style, parenting style you're going to. Yeah. So, guys, if you haven't seen the marriage series that I did, <laughs> yes. a perfect plug for the marriage series videos yes. that we just did. We finished it out last week. Uh, so, obviously, you know, that's, that's an important piece. So, mm -hmm. we just ended it. And I felt that parenting was sort of the next uh, yes. just perfect transition from yes. having spoken about marriage. To then talking about parenting, I felt like, you know, they just dovetail so nicely together yes. and so many things, right, kind of um, correlate with, yes. with one another. Absolutely. So the fact that you just said to work on the marriage first, because, and one of the things we talked about is if you have a strong marriage mm -hmm. and that's the, the key, 
you know, then you can kind of yeah. work on the other stuff. Yeah, because um, when you're parenting, um, you want to parent the same way. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to be sending mixed messages to your kids because yeah. then yeah. it's really chaotic <laughs> if yeah. you do. And, yeah. and we have done that <laughs> at right. different times. And just realizing um, that, that importance of, you know, and you are going to disagree. Right. And so how are you going to, how are you going to resolve that mm -hmm. while being a parent at the same time? Right. So you have to, um, and, and you will, you know, like we said, building, building the plane in the air, um, yeah. you will have to work on your marriage simultaneously, but also doing it beforehand is also important. Yeah. So I want to dig in a little bit into that because I have seen, um, you know, couples who are trying to parent their child and it, it's almost like they have to go back to, to a reset and mm -hmm. decide that they're going to be on the same page as yes. to how they parent. Because at this point, the child, and maybe that's your experience watching, at this point, the child has a different relationship with either parent, mm -hmm. right? There's a parent True. maybe who is more strict mm -hmm. and there's a parent who perhaps is less um, strict. Yeah. And so they, and they play, you know, kids are not stupid. Yeah, they, they do, they get it. They, they, <laughs> they play the parents yeah. sometimes against each other. And so, you know, even, even in, in those situations, you know, what are some things that we can, you know, if that's the case for a couple, what can they do at oh, this point? you know, to kind of get on the same page. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, there, there may be things that were going on in the marriage that led to kind of this difference mm -hmm. in parenting anyway. And so, I mean, so I don't know, it's, it's kind of a, it's a hard question. That is a hard question. I think, well, I think in the moment, I would say, if you're in a situation with your child and in the moment you have two different um, ideas of what, um, whatever parent that is administering the, I don't know if it's discipline or whatever mm -hmm. is happening, mm -hmm. I would say don't, don't um, in publicly shame the other parent or mm -hmm. correct the other parent. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Save that for the bedroom, for, yeah. you know, save that for like, you know, at a, at a different time and talk about it. Yeah. Just because um, you want the kids to experience a united front. And mm. like you said, they, they are perceptive, but um, I think having a united front is important. And then mm. talking through those differences at a later time okay. is what I recommend. Yeah, um, yeah, of course, yeah. if there's like an abusive situation going on, that's totally different. Right, um, right, right. But um, I think if there is just a difference of the way, like I wouldn't do that. And I've made this mistake, mm -hmm. <laughs> believe yeah, me, I've made yeah, this mistake yeah. of like, and my husband, of course, um, of just in front of the child saying, I don't think you should do that or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that just really does confuse the child. Yeah, so. yeah. So having those types of conversations where even if you disagree with your husband on, or, or wife yeah. on the way she's handling a particular issue, not airing it out in front of the children. Yeah. And then taking it back, you know, when the two of you are alone and then addressing mm -hmm. it, how perhaps you might do that in right. the future, right? you know, okay. Yeah, and, and sometimes that's really hard because sometimes you, you really do have very different opinions. I mean, sometimes you have to go to counseling yeah. and kind of figure out, you know, why are we so different and how can we get on the same page? Right, so, so do you recommend, and this is something else that came <clears throat> up too in the marriage series, um, that sometimes you need an outside therapist yes. or a counselor yeah. to, to help the, the marriage or to help yeah. in parenting. Yeah, and I think, you know, that can that can be on different levels. It could be, you know, a, a therapist, a counselor, a pastor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes it means educating yourself by reading books or going to conferences. Mm -hmm. so I feel like there's so many ways to get on the same page. Just um, as I talked about earlier, a mentor couple. Mm -hmm. We've, mm -hmm. you know, gone to our different mentor couples over the years and said, you know, help us here, <laughs> you know. So there's lots of ways to, to figure that out. Okay. Well, let's talk, let's go back a little bit to, um, to what the word says, right, about what, what parenting is like and what teaching our kids mm. is like. And so let's look at Proverbs 22.6. And I think this uh, verse is going to be very familiar to a lot of you. And it says, train up a child in the way he should go. 
even when he is old, he will not depart from mm. it, right? And I think a lot of us as parents, you know, this is, this is the ideal, this is what we want, especially yes. sometimes uh, parents who see their kids perhaps when they become teenagers or 18 on early 20s who, who leave, right, the church. Right. And we hope, right. you know, that training <laughs> yeah. will come into play. I know the Lord has a plan and, you know, yeah. he's going to bring him back. And I know there are a lot of situations. Uh, th uh, you know that way, but um, but was we're, as we're looking at parenting and a, and a, you know training our kids, I want to look at from a developmental level. And I know mm -hmm. you mentioned you um, have done a lot of uh, study on neuroscience. Is that right? Yeah, you know, uh, sort a of little the bit. development. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. development of kids. And yes. sort of from from even that early age, right? How do we train yes. those little itty bitty kids? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a great question. I, um, my husband and I, especially in the the early years, we still have a 13 year old, so we're we're still, you know, we're still getting ready to launch for a, a few more years. But um, but we we would always look at each other and say, parent, like good parenting is hard work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny yeah. when people would say. Your kids are great, you know, like they just turned out that way. But, you know, we both knew, right. like they didn't just turn out this way. They, they took a lot of work. And, um, and so, you know, one of the words that I want to say is intentionality. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have another phrase is, is if, if, you, if, you, um, if you don't train your toddlers, mm -hmm. then you'll, you'll have terrible teens. Yeah. And the reason for that goes back to... Um, train up a child in the way he should go because, yeah. um, you know, so as I began to learn about neuroscience in the last few years, you know, they've, they've really discovered that um, we build these little pathways in mm -hmm. our brain called neuropathways. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they, they start really young. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, and it's interesting, I've, I have a granddaughter now, and mm -hmm. so I've been doing a few of the things that I did with my kids when they were the same age. And one of them is just starting to train them in little things. And so mm -hmm. I, I would say, and I'll come back to, to that little training session in a minute, but I would say that um, we started with our kids as mm -hmm. young as they, we felt like they could comprehend what yeah. was going on, yeah. which is around nine months, I would oh, say, <laughs> with yeah. all our kids. We, so very early. We started noticing that, you know, they would maybe get near like a cord or a plug or something, and we didn't want them to touch it, right? Mm -hmm. So we would, we would start to say no or show them like, you know, this is not for you here and, you know, use some kind of corrective mm -hmm. language and they would get it. Mm -hmm. And so we realized, oh, they know what's going on at this age. And so, um, and you know, we, we learned through our own experiences, through our mentors, and of course through the word, um, the importance of, of um, I wanna say training. Well, we use that word in the scripture, yeah. but, but training, it's not the same as correcting, mm -hmm. right? Training and teaching is, is instructing your kids and showing them like, this is what we do, right? And then yeah. you have to correct it. Right. Um, right. You have to correct it. And as you as you begin to teach and train them and then correct the the behavior that doesn't follow yeah. along, it begins to build those those neural pathways. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 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 cool. And so um, you know, just an example is I was teaching my granddaughter um, not to throw her sippy cup <laughs> off the <laughs> off the high chair, right? And so she just wants to, you know, take her drink and then just throw it on the high right. chair, which every kid does this, right? right? <laughs> but um, that is actually actually an easy way to start teaching your kid yeah. um, to to do what you ask them to do. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, children obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Yeah. And so um, we we taught our kids early um, to uh, obey what mommy and daddy said. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted to throw it off, and I said, I put it on there, and I said, No, don't don't throw the sippy cup. And she looked at me, and she went like this, mm -hmm. and she, she tested me, right? And I said, put it back, and I said, don't throw the sippy cup. And she did it again, but eventually, um, she looked at it, and I said, no. And she went like this, and then she pulled her hand back. And so that showed me. She, she right. could yeah. learn, and she did learn, right? Right. Um, and so as your kids, they learn that process of obedience, 
and they learn to respond to your voice, mm -hmm. it becomes ingrained in them. This is this is right. This is what we do. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the training, right. part of the training process. Right, right. Um, and I think, you know, that goes hand in hand with um, this emotional piece. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about um, the rules, but that, but it's part of it. So when our kids are, are young, um, they don't understand the nuance, right? Mm -hmm. They don't understand yeah. like, well, you know, if, if, it, it it's just let's either things are either right or wrong right when you're zero to I don't know five or six <laughs> um, and so it's not like you can they can just decide for themselves right so that's why we have to help them but um, as they grow and of course as as little babies we love them but as they grow they begin to want to obey out of their love for us mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so it's just that nurture piece is just as important as the training piece. And so yeah. I think sometimes as parents, we think, well, we've got to just train our kids yeah. and this and that. But um, actually, connection, mm -hmm. and I know the, one of the buzzwords right now is attachment, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah. Um, that emotional connection is just as important. Mm -hmm. So we really have to think of it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I kind of think of it as grace and truth. You right. know? Right. Um, they need the truth. They need the grace. Um, and that's a very biblical concept. Um, so that's something that we have really tried to, and, and, and even in the midst of how we train our kids, trying to stay emotionally connected with them mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have so many things going through my head right now <laughs> as you were talking. Because, um, and I haven't, well, the first thing that came to mind as we were talking mm -hmm. about training, because the way you were describing instructing your granddaughter I, I began to think, well, maybe is, is the training of that word, is that the same as discipling? Right? I think so. You know, is, is that the same yeah, root I think word for is. discipling? And then I thought about Jesus and I thought about God. And, and then yeah. you talked about, um, you know, sort of teaching us, right? Yeah. And guiding us in the way that we should go. Yes. Right? That he's, he's parenting. Yes oftentimes parenting us in the way that we should go to mm -hmm. model our lives and to be more and more mm -hmm. like Christ, right? And so I feel like there are so many parallels mm -hmm. between what parents are doing with their kids in the same way that God is doing with yes. us. And, and as you say, right, we need to, as parents, build the connection with mm -hmm. our children because that's what God is doing. If we didn't love God, right, we right. obey out of love right. for God, and kids obey the parents out of love for yes. God. So I had all of these things. Yes. Like, <laughs> no, that is so good. in my head because, yeah. you know, and so I guess if we think of it in that way, think about parenting our kids in the same way that God parents mm -hmm. us yeah. in the way that we should go. Yes. You know, maybe it'll, it'll take on kind of like a different light in, in many yeah. ways. And, you, you know, know um, when I was parenting young kids, one revelation that hit me was... Um, I am the representation of God to my kids. Mm -hmm. Sean and I are. Right. And you know, you, you, you hear about so, so many people and you know, all of us actually have misunderstandings and misperceptions of God's character because of our parents. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I had wonderful parents, but they weren't perfect. And, and some people have had horrible experiences, but um, that's a heavy weight. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think there's so much grace for us to be growing and changing into, into God's image all the time as we're parenting. But for us to realize, like, whatever, however I am to my kid, yeah. that's what they're going to think about yeah. God until they're older. Right. And they can kind right. of sort through, like, oh, that was my mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that was, you know, my mom was not godly in this point. Yeah. <laughs> and I can separate that from who God really is. Yeah. Um, but. But that's power. That's powerful as we think about how we mm -hmm. disciple our yeah. kids. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just like all of those thoughts as you were. Huh. I was like, Lord, this is perfect. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I can. I can see that. Um, you talked about um, you know some of the, the the development again the neuroscience and building these neural pathways mm -hmm. right as we are yeah. as we are teaching them. Um, you know, talk to us about um, you know how parents 
can continue as the kids age, continue in, in different areas, right? Because uh -huh. you're going to be teaching them sort of kind of like training them what not to do, but maybe some other other ways in which, you know, parents can take an active role in, in those neural pathways. What are some other things that they can do? Yeah. Well, I like to, um, you know, I, the, the, prog the progression of, you know, zero to 18 mm -hmm. or whatever, um, I like to just think of, you know, those zero to six, it's very much instructive, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then I would say like, six to 12 um, is more of, it's still very instructive, mm -hmm. but it's much more of a um, partnership maybe, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. 12 to 18, yeah. it's more of like a coach, you know? Mm. Um, and especially I would say from like, you know, 15 to 18. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I just think that, uh, you know, zero to six, you're really telling your kids what to do. Yeah. Um, six to twelve, you're um, you're still you're still telling them what to do, but you're asking them more questions. Yeah. And I think you know that gets as they get older, the fifteen to eighteen or yeah. whatever, um, just depends on their maturity, honestly. Yeah. Um, you're asking them questions, but you're really letting them take more leadership mm -hmm. so that by the time they're they're yeah. out of your house right. it's it's definitely more of a coaching mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you're not necessarily offering your advice all the time right kind of thing um and so let me get back to your question um maybe you could re-ask that question again yeah well i in fact i i sort of want to talk with you um about those particular stages and sort okay. of what they look like yeah. as you're, you're saying, you know, zero to six, it's, it's more instructive. And then, yeah. um, six to 12, right. You're, um, yeah, it's more, I think it's more of a partnership. So a partnership. Yeah. yeah so partnership. It's, it's kind of like a dance. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you go this way, I go this way. Yeah. And, and so you're, you're, you're learning your kids. You're, you're, you're finding out more of like, how, how are you made? You know, mm -hmm. my 13-year-old my is a soccer Puberty's player. Puberty is right in there. Oh, yeah, yeah which is so. crazy, right? <laughs> um, but, yeah, you're, you're, you're beginning to see who they are, yeah. and you're, you're really trying to help them flourish. Yeah. So, um, you know, in many ways, it kind of turns to a, like a servant role yeah. of, like, how can I help you become who you yeah. are? Yeah. And, you know, the hope and desire is that you've already laid those foundations to yeah. where you're yeah. not putting out fires all the time. So this yeah. is what happens to a lot of people is they get into those teenage years and they're yeah. having to put out fires all the time. Right. Um, or tween, you know, tween, I guess we're not really talking the teenage years. So, um, so yeah, really with, with the, the six to 12, you're really, you're really holding their mm -hmm. hand. You're walking alongside of them. Yeah. Um, it's still very, you know, you're very much, um, close together. Um, involved in pretty much everything that's going yeah. on in their lives. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, um, and you're, and you're still, but you're still nurturing who, who yeah. they are. You're yeah. actually still discovering, I was saying yeah. that the six to 12, yeah. Yeah. helping them discover, yeah. like, you know, getting them involved in different activities mm -hmm. or, um, trying to see what inspires them, what motivates yeah. them. Um, you know, what inspired my, first born daughter yeah. is completely different from right. my last born son. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it's, it's just fun. And, um, yeah. And then by the time they're teens, mm -hmm. it's really, you're in more of that servant role. Yeah. Like, how can I help you grow in this? Yeah. You know, yeah, to coach them, coach them. Um, yes, it's really interesting. Um, you know, something I encourage is just parents to really understand their giftings. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you do have a spouse like my husband, I would say he's a little better with the teens mm -hmm. um, and I'm a little better with the littles. Yeah. Um, he just has, he's a great coach, um, meaning like, uh, not like a, well, he is a great coach for <laughs> sports too. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a great coach with teens. He was, yeah. a, he was a youth pastor before and, um, so sometimes I'm like, this is your, you can do this yeah. and I'll do the, I'll do the littles. Um, but yeah, so it does just take a different, and I think sometimes parents, um, 
a mistake that you know we make sometimes is we we forget that this transition has happened, yeah. and our kids don't need us to be instructive. Um, but they need us to be like cheerleaders, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And of course, we'll always have, as long as they're in our home, we'll always have that like instructive part, yeah. but it, it really does change. Mm -hmm. um, and if you've, if you've done it well, you know, if you've yeah. slowly released the rope, um, right. then, then hopefully they are able to make good decisions, yeah. you know, yeah. and you can, you can affirm them and, and bless them and, and find out yeah. how to support them. Yeah. Um, what is the role of um, kind of guiding them in scripture? You know, what are, what are some, some ways to begin to, to talk with them? And, you know, if we are assuming, right, that the parents are bringing the kids to church right. or maybe to Sunday school. Yes. But, but in the home. In the home. You know, what role yes. can parents take yes. with, their, with their kids? Yeah, that's, that's so important. And going back to the training up a child in the way he should go, um, I think that, well, first of all, I would say modeling. Mm -hmm. is Modeling is the most powerful tool yeah. in your tool, toolkit. Um, and I should have said that earlier. Um, yeah. But, you know, I'd say for your kids are going to, if, if you're living a life um, that they see is, glorifying to God. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're an authentic believer yeah. and you're not going to be perfect, right? But if you're living a life where you, you know, have a regular time where you read your Bible mm -hmm. and you pray, um, they're going to see that. So first of all, I'd say that is the huge, most important thing. Um, I think that um, there's, there's different ways to get it in, mm -hmm. right? Um, I've seen families have regular devotions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for some people, that's like a, a I don't want to say heavy yoke, but some people feel like, oh, I can't, I can't do that. But um, I think for us, what was important is to teach our kids to have like a regular mm. personal devotional time. Now, mm. is a two-year-old going to do that? No. <laughs> um, and so what we started off doing was um, having regular Bible time, like reading our Bibles with them every day, like a yeah. children's Bible, yeah. right? And then they yeah. transition to being able to read. Mm -hmm. And so we would say, let's, let's have our time with Jesus yeah. every day. Yeah. Um, we did, we did try to have devotions. Mm -hmm. We, I can't say we were the best, <laughs> um, but I think um, having like dinner times, yeah. we, you know, we would pray or we, you know, pray for certain things. Sometimes we would bring in like a certain devotional. Yeah. Um, and then I think also just on that modeling piece, um, if you have like a authentic relationship and with your spouse of, of going to Jesus mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talking about, you know, your relationship yeah. with it, what is he, what is he saying to you? Mm -hmm. What is, you know, and then also with your kids having those regular times like of, prayer you know for example we would tuck our kids in at night yeah. we'd pray over them um so at different points in our relationship things like scripture yeah. prayers would come out just as a as an uh, outflow of our own mm -hmm. um relationship with the lord and um so yeah so i would say like some people are really good about having regular schedule doing the same thing over and over yeah that's great mm -hmm. um some people are, you know, stronger and being more spontaneous and, mm -hmm. you know, just, mm -hmm. so I think there's room for both. Yeah. Um, yeah. but having, having a real relationship with the Lord is yeah. the best. And then of course, you know, like you said, having your kids at church and having opportunities for them to be around godly people who are going to speak truth. And, mm -hmm. so. so let me ask you, Laura, um, and this may, may be, uh, you know, this is a hard question right. because I, I think, you know, parenting is hard, right? Yeah. And um, you know, we know that we're going to make, you know, parents are going to make mistakes. I know I certainly made Absolutely. a lot of mistakes, you know, with my daughter. Um, but what do you say to, you know, to parents or, um, yeah, what do you say to parents who are, whose kids, right? have gone a little bit off mm. of um, 
you know, the path in, sure. in some ways, or maybe, or maybe they're being rebellious, yeah. uh, you know, toward the parents. Yeah. Um, you know, is there something that the parents can do mm -hmm. to fix their relationship? Because sometimes it may be a relationship issue between, right, sure. the, the parent and the child. Sure. Um, it doesn't always have to be something external that's going on with the kid. It, it may just be like an interpersonal rebellion that's happening yeah. uh, that's happening there so if it's you know if it's in those instances you know what yes. do you say to parents whose kids are yeah. just you know being rebellious and they they don't want to hear from their parents and yeah. particularly the teenage years can be absolutely so, so difficult yes um, so you know what are what are what is your um, you know what are your ideas on, yeah. on that and what parents can do yeah well, I think there's no easy answer. Yeah, you know, right. no easy answer to that question. Um, and you know, I think, I think we've all been there with our kids, where there's there's always like a little something there um, that needs to be resolved, be it small or large. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my husband and I, um, we've talked a lot about parenting, just both of us through the years, um, yeah. but but to a lot of people. But I think one of the biggest things that we would say is. Um, you you always have to stay in a place of humility, mm. um, and so we have apologized to our kids mm. over and over mm -hmm. for dumb things that we said or did mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. you know hurt their feelings, just responded wrong, um, you know so many so many things just mis mishandled a situation for whatever reason, um, and so I think you know. The, the easy, simple answer is humbling yourself, mm. you know, first before the Lord. Yeah. And, you know, um, if there was a, if there was something that you did wrong, mm -hmm. repent before mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Um, and so that goes back to you and God. Um, and, you know, like I said, there's no simple answer to your question because it might need, mean that you need to go through counseling. Yeah. You know, it might need that you need um, an, an um a, me a mediator or mm -hmm. you know it might it might mean that you bring someone else in yeah. but that does start with humility so yeah. humbling yourself before God and then humbling yourself before your kids like yeah. I feel like you know so many times we apologize to our kids for things and kids are great about yeah. forgiveness yeah. they're they're just like you know most of the time unless there's just been like a pattern of hurts yeah. over time yeah. you know yeah. sometimes it is harder for kids to forgive but I do find that kids are very forgiving and when when you apologize to your kid and they forgive you it's like you know it's like everything can just start over yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. um so yeah and 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 that is that is what Jesus was yeah. he was a humble man yeah. you yeah. know so that is the way that we and I find that um, when we're humble, if we're mm -hmm. humble parents, our kids want to follow Jesus. Yeah, they do because mm -hmm. I mean, nobody wants to follow somebody who's proud. Yeah, usually kids rebel. Right, I find that. <laughs> um, if you're a proud parent, um, you know, there's something that is off-putting. Yeah, to yeah, kids. yeah. Um, and you know, I'm I'm so glad you you said that because you know. In my own personal experience, and here I'll share a little bit about what I went through with my daughter. We went through this really hard season, um, and I basically, God kind of had to show me mm. that I needed to be humble. Mm. And um, sometimes I think we want to parent, um, we feel like we can change the kids, mm. you know, and this is something else too that we talked about in marriage. Like we, you know, a spouse feels like they, you know, if they nag <laughs> enough right. that you'll make your spouse change or <laughs> you'll make your kids change. And it doesn't work it doesn't. that way. It, yeah. it makes them rebel even more. Yeah. And so, so I, you know, I, I got into that pattern myself thinking that I, you know, if I nagged enough or if I got on her case enough, yeah. then maybe something would change. But it was just frustrating her, frustrating me Ooh. and damaging the relationship. And so, you know, it was a, a what they call it, a come to Jesus moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because God had to humble me mm. and to, and to recognize that, you know, 
I could not change her, that the Holy Spirit was going to be the one to do mm. the work, and that my That's job, right. you know, in my daughter's case, right, and as you say, every case is different. Right. In my daughter's case, I just needed to love her. Yes. I just needed to love her. And, and so once I did that, mm. and, and it hasn't been like a smooth sailing, but something changed mm. in their relationship. That's good. Something changed in their wow. relationship. Um, and so, you know, I really love that you mm. said that because I think sometimes we miss that piece that we have to ask for forgiveness, that mm -hmm. we need to be humble, that we need to recognize too the work of the Holy Spirit in their own lives as well. Yes. And that, you know, we can train and we can guide and we can do what we can do, mm. um, but God is going to do the work in their mm. lives. That's right. And God is the one who's going to kind of, you know, yeah, just. <laughs> yeah. Well, and humility brings us to a place of agreeing with God's plan. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we take ourselves out of it. We lower ourselves yeah. enough to, and and so, like you said, then He can have His way. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, as you were talking, it, it it made me think of something else, and and I just wanted to mention, and um, I talked a little bit about the nurturing of the emotional mm -hmm. part of your child, yeah. and. Um, when you talked about, I, I don't know if you use the word accepted, but um, it made me realize that acceptance mm -hmm. is an emotional need. Mm -hmm. And so um, when, when we're humble and we can not just sort of think of ourselves in one sense, we can see yeah. what our child needs. And yeah. I think that that is one of the biggest things is recognizing what our kids need. Mm -hmm. And that takes, it takes some practice, yeah. you know, it takes some um, stepping back and thinking. Sometimes my husband and I would talk and pray about our, the different personalities of our kids yeah. and say like, you know, this child um, yeah, acts this way and, you know, different from this child. And so what is it that they, we think that they need? And so mm -hmm. then we would say, well, well, I think that they need more attention or more acceptance mm -hmm. or approval or, you know, these different, different needs that we all have. Um, but some kids have more, you know, they have more yeah. of a need for comfort or more yeah. of a need for than another kid. And so really even thinking through that. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that word. I think um, all of us crave acceptance. Yes. Right. And I think for kids, right, the first people that we crave acceptance from is our parents. Huge. And so, so you know, to be able to give that to our kids, um, I think, is key yes. to helping them too, right, in yeah. their own personal growth. Yes. As they're kind of trying to figure out who they are and yeah. accepting themselves. It's so huge. And, you know, psychologists will tell you it all goes back to your childhood. <laughs> and it really all goes back to your parents. Yeah, right. And that, again, it's like that. We are the first people that they um, get all these life experiences from, and we're not perfect. Yeah. But this is why we're having this broadcast, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is so that you know um, it'll help us begin to think about like what what do my kids need and yeah. how, and like the thing about needs, and we don't have to go too deeply into this because I have a whole teaching on needs. <laughs> but is the thing about needs is that sometimes. We, we, when we even think about our own needs is we, we, we think they're wrong. Like I shouldn't yeah. have needs, yeah. but we yeah. all have needs and they're not good or bad. Yeah. And it's the same for our kids. Yeah. It yeah. is just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so it's up to us as their parents mm -hmm. on those emotional needs to, to fill them. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. you know, it's like the weaning process. Eventually they're going to have to learn how to meet their needs, get their needs met in the right way, right in the right way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, part of their relationship with God and the relationship with others. Yeah. But we help them as parents to meet yeah. those needs. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, respect. Yeah. Right. Um, because one of the things that I've that I've noticed now, my my own cultural background is Latino and respect for elders is, okay. is a, you know, very big. But yes. Not to say that you know, the Anglo culture is not the same, but I feel like when it comes to, um, you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, when it comes to parenting, at least we may have gotten into a pattern where it was more important to be your kid's friends than like an authority figure. Yeah. And I honestly don't know if that continues to be an issue uh, nowadays with 
you know, kids not having that level of respect for their parents that they used to have, or even yeah. that in some other cultures, yeah. um, kids express, you know, to and, I, and I, I, I suppose it's not like an either or, either you respect me, or I'm your friend, right? Right, it right. Can, it can be both. Be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can be both. Yeah. So, I mean, talk a little bit about that. I know if you, ha I don't know if you have those conversations with parents, you know, who are yeah. trying to like figure that out. Well, that's interesting. Um, I actually come from a more of a Southern culture. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I, I do come from a little bit more of that background. Plus I'm 54. So I think right. it's a little more in, <laughs> you know, I grew up with more of, of a respectful culture, yeah. so to speak. Um, so that is more my paradigm. Um, I think that um, I think that if we look at healthy authority, it's mm. it's um, it is in the Bible, mm -hmm. right? Um, and God is our authority. And you know, the Bible does talk about submission, yeah. And you know, all these things that we won't get into all of that right now. But I do think there is a a very healthy authority structure. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, as believers, we're always trying to find it because we've got, like you said, we've got culture saying one thing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, the Bible saying another, and we're always trying to interpret what does that look like, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I think, I think it can, I think it can look a little different for, for different people, but I think that um, as far as parenting goes, yeah. um, it's very clear that parents are the authority because it says children obey your parents yeah. in the Lord for this is right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and then as we get older, we honor our parents, mm -hmm. right? We right. kind of turn it around. And um, so I think that it's not, it, it, Jesus, he demonstrated that He's our servant, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. you know, it's this dichotomy right. of like <laughs> God is in charge, yeah. but Jesus serves us. Serves. And I think yeah. that's what we're supposed to be like as parents, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's the, it's the um, we are the authority that watches our children's mm. feet, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, we are I in charge that. of them mm -hmm. and we... Um, and they, for their own sakes, yeah. they need to learn yeah. obedience right. in order to have a, a life that flourishes. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I see a lot of kids who are confused about, like, who they are. Mm. Yeah, their identity and gender Identity, issues. Yeah. purpose. Yeah. And um, I think it's because they haven't had those, those foundations built. Mm -hmm. I feel like... Kids are more secure when they have, yeah. they have the rules and the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I think I shared with you before we started. There's a little phrase that we've always said: "Rules without relationship leads yeah. to rebellion." Yeah. Um, and so, if you have one without the other, yeah. you're you're gonna you're gonna be lost. Yeah. Is what I feel like, and I, I think we see that in our culture. Mm -hmm. um, we see a lot of kids who are lost. They haven't been given any kind of foundation. Yeah. Um, and I think because there hasn't been um, healthy authority in their yeah. lives, it's either harsh authority mm -hmm. or no authority. Right, you know? right, right. Um, so it's sort of extremes in extremes. either direction. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, but I, I, you know, I keep coming back to, and I don't know if maybe it's the Holy Spirit, kind of this idea of um, you know healthy authority and our own relationship with the Father. Right. And this idea that, um, you know, in scripture, there's, you know, biblical evidence for being a friend of, mm. to God and yes. being a friend of God. Right. Yes. So here is this right authority, you know, in heaven who rules over everything, yes. who created us in his image uh, to whom, you know, we obey. Yes. Uh, and in you know with whom we have relationship, but who also wants to be our friend. Yes. Right. So it's this both and yes. relationship that the Father has with us, including that of servant in yeah. the in the form of His Son yeah. Jesus Christ, right? Who washes our feet. And yeah. so it just it it's painting this beautiful for me relationship of what what the, our parents and mm. the model that God already has in scripture with the relationship he has with us yeah. and what is the 
his his model yes. for parenting our children. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so as we just have been discussing this, it's you know these these beautiful images. Of yeah. the father's modeling of his relationship with us that yeah. we can have with our children. Absolutely. Those healthy, healthy relationships. Absolutely. So, um, so it's just beautiful. Yes, that's good. <laughs> As we've been talking. Now, I want to turn our attention to, uh, we, we have about 15 minutes okay, you know, left, but I want to talk about um, technology. Okay. This has been such uh, you know, a huge topic in the media. Yes. Um, we talked about it in some um, episodes back, uh, its impact on mental health yes. of, our, of our kids yes. specifically. And so, um, so, so talk to me about, and I don't know, maybe your, your, younger, your youngest child yeah. is the one having yes. to deal with this, you know, sort of the technology piece as he's growing, right? Mm -hmm. And so what is your philosophy around technology? And maybe is there anything that you could counsel parents who are watching, yeah. you know, around technology? Yeah. yeah I, um, as, as you said, I have five kids. My oldest is now almost 28 and my mm -hmm. youngest is 13. So mm -hmm. it's 15 years and like right in the middle mm -hmm. of just technology, just, you know, going like wildfire. And so Definitely my 28-year-old, what she experienced is is different, not completely different, but different from mm -hmm. my 13-year-old. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for sure with my 13-year-old, it's like you're pushing back the fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just feel like, you know, the whole world is on fire and you're just, <laughs> you're trying to like hold it back, you right. know, with a fire hose or whatever. Um, a little bit, you know, with my 28-year-old, um, I felt like I could... I could have boundaries and it was easy, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, not never easy, but boundaries around technology. Um, for example, um, she and her sister got their first phones when um, they were senior and junior in high school and mm -hmm. they shared it. Right. And it wasn't smart. <laughs> um, the flip phone. <laughs> now my, yes. And now my 13 year old, um, all of his friends have a smartphone. Yeah. Um, and you know, so, so our philosophy is, um, has been hold them back from, um, as much technology. Yeah. Now I, I'm going to come back on this one because, well, anyway, hold them back from as much technology as possible, yeah, right. <laughs> um, with, uh, while living in the real world. So mm -hmm. it's almost like the, the Bible verse, live, living in the world, but not mm -hmm. of it, right? Yeah. Um, and and I, think, I think that the reason I say that is because um, as we've all noticed, we all have smartphones, but the tendency of technology to take you out of your mm -hmm. own reality. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of research that's been coming out about the way it changes our kids' brains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things that I read recently is that it creates children who are not as empathetic. Mm. I don't know if you've heard that or not. Yeah. Um, and I just think that's because they're, they're not living in reality. Yeah. They're kind of living in a virtual right. reality, right? right? And so they're interacting with people mm -hmm. that aren't like, they are real people, but they're right. not in real life, right. you know, but they call that IRL in yeah, real life. Yeah. Um, and so our, our goal is to have our child have more in real life experiences mm -hmm. than on, yeah. you know, cell phones or whatever. Um, and so, you know, we have, um, just different, you know, different, um, not rules, but just, well, I guess rules, but just how much screen time can you have? Yeah. You yeah. know, so uh, it varies like from the weekend to the weekday. Um, also, I think just um, helping your kids have find things that aren't video related. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, one example um, is I have this little deck of cards that have like creative questions on them. Mm -hmm. And so um, with with my son, my husband's been out of town, and so with my son at dinner time, mm -hmm. we've been asking each other right. questions, <laughs> and it's great. actually kind of cool because um, I'm getting to hear things about him, and he's getting to hear things about yeah. me that we normally wouldn't just share, right. you know, right. um, like who 
who's been the most inspirational person to you or things like that. So yeah. I think for us trying to trying to help our kids think of like what are things that are not associated mm-hmm. with the screen mm-hmm. that you can do. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of times just saying like, hey, we're not doing screens today or mm-hmm. Um, you know, some people will say like, uh, we try to do Sabbath, mm-hmm. um, and we don't do screens on Sabbath. Yeah. Um, what I have found is with, with my kids, you know, throughout history with my own kids and even with other kids, um, when I've said, you know, no screens or no technology, um, when they don't have the choice, mm-hmm. they will figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> they will find, and, and usually it's pretty creative. Right. Um, my, my son, a lot of times when I'll say no screens, he likes to create his own like sneakers, mm-hmm. like he'll design them and things. Yeah. And so he'll go and he'll spray paint, and he'll do all these things. <laughs> so I think helping your kids be intentional, like brainstorm with them, make a yeah. list. Like I've done these things like a world like, Five things that you can do that's yeah. not video related or yeah. screens. And they'll have to go look at the list and right. pick it out. So, yeah. But talk to us a little bit more. I'd, I'd be interested to hear in addition to them not being as empathetic yeah. as, they, as they would be or develop by having, you know, face-to-face contact with people. Yeah. Um, what are some of some other ways in which technology is impacting our kids? Yeah, well, I think it goes along with the empathy thing, but kids aren't able to have really good conversations mm-hmm. with adults, yeah. I've noticed. Right. Um, because, I, you know, again, I didn't grow up that way, and so I don't want to be judgmental, and I think that there's there's... There's some good things about it too, mm-hmm. but I have noticed, um, um, and this is also in the research, you know, that kids yeah. that kids don't have as good of conversational skills. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to ask questions as yeah. much um, because, again, they're not having this yeah. in person, right. in real life conversations. Um, and so, you know, I know there's there's also research around, um, and I and I don't have the research in front of me, but yeah, yeah. around ADHD, um, mm. and um, because the the reward, you know, the reward system with your brain, and um, with the dopamine, they call it yeah. getting the dopamine right. hits. I mean, right. I notice it myself. You yeah. know, <laughs> like, oh, I got a text. Oh, I got a, you know, it's like your brain gets this little squirt of dopamine, yeah. and um, and that has affected, it's more affected our kids' mm-hmm. brains. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I, you know, I don't have as much of like the hard data, um, but I do, I just, I have noticed. Yeah. I have noticed as a culture that kids aren't as interactive. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, in addition to that, and just in general, you know, access to the internet. It, it gives them access to this whole oh, world absolutely. and things I didn't even that, talk about that. that yeah. we wouldn't want them to have yeah. um, or to encounter before they are ready. Not yeah. that you would ever want them to encounter any of that yeah. stuff, but certainly when they're young, you know, and if they have a smartphone, pornography and yeah. images and videos and things like that, that you don't want kids yes. to have access to. And so, so I just, you know, I would recommend... Um, putting filters mm-hmm. on your yeah. computers, yeah. putting the, there's a lots of, um, you know, a- Apple has a lot of screen mm-hmm. settings mm-hmm. that you can look into, um, filters, screen settings, um, you know, there's like some books out there. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, I think it's called Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, mm. which is, I think there's one for young children and then there's one for a little mm. bit older children, okay. but that to help your kids be aware of if they did see something mm-hmm. um, on the computer, yeah. um, like what, what would they do? What would they say? How can they tell their parents? Yeah. Also, if they have seen something, you know, this book gets a conversation mm-hmm. going. Um, and so our kids are going to, they say that our kids are going to inevitably yeah. see something. It's just yeah. helping them nav- navigate it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, and, and pornography is huge. and. Yeah. Um, you know, that's kind of what we all fear, Mm -hmm. um, for our kids. Um, and the statistics are, are mind boggling and very Um, scary (laughs) and very scary. And then I would say, um, you know, it happens, it can happen to anyone. And just going back to the training your kids, I think, um, it's not necessarily going to guarantee that they're not going to fall into an addictive behavior, but I think when we 
in our home life, mm -hmm. if we give our kids a taste of yeah. the goodness of God, and yeah. again, we're not the perfect family, you know, right. we have our warts, but um, when we give our kids the, the taste of the goodness of God, the taste for evil mm -hmm. is more bitter, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah. they yeah. might taste it, and it does taste good at first, yeah. right? But, um, but, but the, I think the more that they are in, like, you know, heaven, so yeah. to speak, <laughs> um, or heaven on earth, you know, in the uh, kingdom of God, yeah. um, the less they're going to want to stray. Yeah. Um, and, um, or maybe, you know, if they, if they do taste of, of pornography or, you know, different things in the world that are addictive, mm -hmm. you know, m more easily brought back because they're caught earlier. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, I do have a friend who she would always say, pray that your kids always get caught. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, because, because they can be brought in quicker. They can be corrected quicker yeah. and be brought back into the path that God has for them yeah. quicker. Yeah. And you know, I mean, all my kids have gotten caught in different okay. things and I'm so thankful. It's the mercy of God. Yeah. You know? And I feel like God does that to us too. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he when we, you know, we think we're getting away with stuff yeah. and then we get caught <laughs> and it's because of his love for us, absolutely. right? He makes a blow up in our face. <laughs> yeah. And then we get to humble ourselves. <laughs> right. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but on the on these last few minutes, I yeah. just wanted to um, ask you a question. Um, in terms of um, the, the subject of sex, right, and, and how early to talk, to begin to talk oh, yeah. to your children yeah. about that. And are there any good books that we could recommend to parents to, to talk to them about, you know, in a sort of a, a healthy way and yes. in a Christian way to talk about this very difficult topic? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to be able to remember the names of the books. Um, <laughs> but maybe you can email them to me because I send okay. you know, as a resource. Yeah, for, yeah, because um, we yeah. have used... Um, well, actually, we we did use some books with our kids, but mostly we just talked to them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's mostly really how it how it kind of all happened. And I talked to the girls, and Sean talked to the boys, and it's always awkward, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always awkward. And I don't know if we did the best job, but right. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I think it kind of depends on the kid, on yeah. the age. Mm -hmm. um, some parents whose kids are maybe like in a public school setting mm. decide to talk to their kids earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, I think some kid parents talk to their kids around eight or nine. Yeah. Um, I think we talk to our kids around 10, mm -hmm. 11. Our kids were in like private Christian schools. Yeah. And so we weren't, I'm not saying that they don't always get exposed, but um, it didn't feel like they were getting exposed yeah. and, and yeah. based on conversations that we had. And I think you can you can have like fishing conversations yeah. with your kids and kind of get to understand yeah. what, what they know mm -hmm. and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but when you start realizing they're probably mm -hmm. gonna hear this from someone else mm -hmm. if I don't tell them first yeah. is when you wanna talk to them. Right. Right. And you know, my husband and I, we tried to um, be very open in our family about, first of all, we are affectionate, my mm -hmm. husband and I, mm -hmm. and I would say that's another part of parenting is let your kids experience mm -hmm. your romantic relationship. Yeah. Um, we, we love this because we would always embrace or kiss or whatever, and especially when our kids were little, they would, like a magnet, they would come and they would kind of like join in the party. They would come and hug us. And Sean and I laugh now because our dog does that. Yeah. Whenever we hug, our dog wants to come and hug. But it brings security. Yeah. It brings security to your kids yeah. when mom and dad are, you know, together. But um, so I guess what I was trying to say is, is you know, we didn't shy away from letting our kids know that we had a romantic yeah. relationship. Yeah. And um, you know, my husband's actually probably more open about it than I am. I'm still a little bashful talking about it with our kids. But now that our kids are older, yeah. we can talk about it as a family. And, mm -hmm. you know, they can make jokes about mom and dad or whatever. But um, so I think not making it such a taboo mm -hmm. subject mm -hmm. um, as, as you begin to appropriately introduce things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just like, this is normal and this is beautiful in the context of marriage, right. you know, right. Um, right. is really, you know, how I just 
think how we've talked about it and how I think it can be healthy. Yeah. And I love that we're kind of um, coming kind of for full circle again towards um, the marriage relationship and how critical, as you're saying, right, to for the kids to see yeah. a healthy, loving relationship in their parents. Yeah. And that it's, you know, it, it's normal, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, and then how you, we started talking about uh, parenting. Right, that it's it's important, as you said, to begin to work in yourself, right, for the, yes. that that couple who's perhaps going to have a child or thinking about children. Yes, that it's important to work on the married relationship yes. as they are thinking about parenting. It's full and circle. So, full yeah. circle. Full so circle. I love that. I love that. Any last thoughts uh, huh. to our parents out there that you might want to want to share with them, Laura, before we yeah. sign off? You know, um, I would just say. Um, I just have a lot of respect for parents, so um, give yourself a pat on the back and take a deep breath and, you know, inhale God's grace because this is His heart and He is for you as a parent. And parenting is hard. It's hard. And I think it's the hardest thing we will ever do. Yeah. Parenting mm-hmm. is the hardest thing we will ever do and we cannot do it without the grace of God. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I would say inhale His grace for the journey. Amen. So those are the last words. (laughs) Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.